Today's goal, what we're going to talk about is purity, and, and I know that, it, it, you know, we talk about purity and it's not something that's uh, uncommon to talk about in the church. It's probably been talked about in other classrooms right here this morning. Um, probably not been talked about in the way that we're going to talk about it, uh, because we're talking about purity inside of our marriages. And, and you might think, well, you know, I mean, if we're talking about purity the way that, that most of our classes are, uh, we wouldn't need to be here, so it's uh, completely different for us this morning. But leading up to that, we talked about setting priorities in week one. Y'all help me out. Priority number one is? Priority number one in our lives? God. Priority number two? Spouse. Spouse. All right. Making that real in our lives and understanding that that's the case and that's how it should be. Week two, what did we talk about? Building foundations. We talked about transparency. We talked about divine marriages. Week three, we talked about avoiding snares. What's the snare for ladies? Greener pastures. What about men? Passivity. Passivity. That's right. Week four, we talked about managing expectations. And we talked about uh, how when we move desires to expectations, we remove the area of unconditional love in our marriages. This is that's huge. I still that one to me. I keep going back to that because it's so. When we look at our culture today, our marriages are just full of contracts and deals and negotiations and working things out and working on our marriages. And when really what our marriages should be full of is unconditional love. It should be full of yeah. No matter if you fall, I'm with you and working and going through things that way and showing each other that unconditional love that God showed us. Week five, we talked about the great submission. Uh, our marriage is a relationship. It's a God honoring one another when we uh, um, honor God through submitting to each other. And we talked about men loving your wives, women respecting your husbands. Last week, what did we talk about? Yeah, that's right. Week six, we talked about understanding mysteries, his needs and her needs. We talked about needs, all that good stuff. I challenged you last week to get along, to share those with one another, to find out what your spouse's need is, their number one need, find out what their find out what their love language is, learn how to speak that, learn how to talk to them, learn how to share with them um, in a way that speaks directly to them. And that's what we talked about last week. So this week. We're going to talk about purity. We're going to be in James chapter 4. We're actually going to jump around a little bit, but you can go ahead and flip over to James chapter 4 if you want to, and that's where we're going to start. Um, and this morning, it's uh, it's really important to understand where we're going with this and what, what we're talking about here. And this is not necessarily a marriage lesson, okay? Um, it is, but it's not. It's more of a lesson for us today to think about what it would take to make my life in the area of purity line up with the Bible. Um, and when I'm talking about purity, I'm talking about our hearts, our minds, and our soul, and purifying those and letting God cleanse those to the point that we understand um, better where He's at and we can walk with Him. It does include the area of the area of sexual purity, and we will talk about that some this morning. But the problem with our homes, our marriages, even our churches, we have adapted so much of our thinking to the way that the world goes, and, and, and we're so lost in this area. We accept things to be reality, and we accept things to be okay with us, and we, we talk about things being acceptable instead of being uh, the perfect will of God. And we talk about things being okay instead of whether or not they're God-honoring. And so that's really what we're going to talk about, and uh, we're going to look at what purity is. And so let's go ahead and flip over to with, with James chapter 4. verse. I'm actually going to read 1 through 10, and what this is is it's... it's 
the rebuking of the worldliness. So just read with me and then we'll concentrate on a couple of verses. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and ye have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. You ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and ye adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain the spirit that dwelleth in, in us lusteth the envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but give grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Re resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Let me pray for us. Dear Lord God, I just ask you this morning to speak into us what you would have for us to get from you. God, it just moved me out of the way. I ask you to speak your word into each heart, God, into each uh, marriage this morning. Lord, show us what you would have for us. And, and we give you all the honor and all the glory for everything that you, you've done for us, to us, and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so purity is our battle. It's a battle against worldliness. And we look at this, and over and over it talks about um, the, the lusts of our, our minds and, and the lusts of our souls and the things that we're after is worldliness. And verse 5, or verse 4, um, gives it to us the best way that I know how. The world is enmity with God, whosoever... Therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So if we're a friend of the world, we're an enemy of God. If we're a friend of the world, we're an enemy of God. Yet so many times in our lives, we worry about how our lives line up with our friends, with the people around us, with the things that are going on in this world, with the with the truths that we're told, with the truths that we're told will make us wealthy, will make us popular, will make us this status or that status, and all of these things. And, and guys, I just really think that we have to do something uh, about this. We have to choose to live in a way that is completely different than what we're doing right now. Completely different. And that's why... I, I titled this Radical Purity because there's going to take some radical moves to make this happen. And not everybody's going to do this. And not everybody's going to be okay with, with making these types of changes. I understand that. But I told Derek back several weeks ago that I, I, and I'm serious about this. This is not something that I just dream. This is not just something that... I really feel like that God is allowing us to change our culture through this class. I really feel that way. I really feel like he's going to use the marriages in this room, the relationships in this room, to change our culture. And when I say our culture, I'm talking about here, in Decatur, in this area around you, the people that you know. I really feel like that what God is allowing us to do is to come in here and to get real with one another and to challenge each other to live in a way that is so different than the people around us that they really look at our lives, they look at our marriages, and they say, that's the kind of marriage I want. They don't look at our house, they don't look at our cars, they don't look at our jobs, they don't look at our outside external lives. They look at our marriages and they look at the relationship that we have with one another and they say, I want that. 
Because that's what it comes down to. And every single one of us have the opportunity to stand in front of other people and to live our lives in a way that just blows them away on how we treat our spouse, on how we have a relationship with one another. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? That's the only part of your life that's divine. That's the only part of your life that God's in. Why are you so worried about everything else on the external and not worried about what's happening in your home with your spouse? The part that you can make the biggest difference in this world with is right there. Why are we not more focused on that than anything else? And I truly feel like that God has given us the opportunity to come in here together and to hold each other accountable and to challenge each other to say, you know what, your most important relationship in your life is with your spouse. Won't you invest in that? Won't you do everything that you can, husband, to protect that? Won't you do everything that you can, wife, to respect that? Won't you do everything that you can together to show other people that it is the most important relationship in their life? Can we do that? I'm a little passionate about that. I really feel like that's what God's given us the opportunity to do. And we can, we can talk about so many different things, and we can talk about all of the things of this world and how to treat people at our jobs and how to treat people here and there and how to, how to study the Word of God and all of that stuff. And it's all good, and it's all things that we need to do. But God has given me this burning desire to challenge every single one of us in the area of our marriage. And when we do that, and we look at that, and it goes back to purity. And it goes back to the fight that we're fighting. There's no fight greater that we fight every single day in our marriages than purity. There's no fight greater that we fight in our marriages every single day. It's what Satan uses. It's what he puts in front of our face everywhere we go. And it's allowed into our lives every, every minute of every day. And we let it happen. You guys, I, I could get off on a lot of different things, on what uh, uh, specifics. But see, there's, purity is not about those. It's not about do's and don'ts. It's not about a list of things that you shouldn't do or that you should do or that let's line up these movies and we watch. We can watch this one, we can watch this one, we can watch this one. No, can't watch that one. That's not what purity is. Purity is not about me. Purity is about God. And so here's the thing. Here's where we've got to change today. This is what I want you to change. I want you to stop asking yourself. I want you to stop looking at yourself and saying... Is it okay if I watch this? Is it okay if I read this book? Is it okay if I watch this movie? Is it okay if I'm friends with this person? Is it okay if this relationship is in my life? Is it okay if this, if this, if this is it? You all, you all get me? I want you to stop doing that. Stop doing that. Here's what I want you to replace that question with. In everything that you do, is this God honoring? Is it God honoring if I watch this? Is it God honoring if I read this? Is it God honoring if I spend my money on this? Is it God honoring if I have this relationship? Is it God honoring if I work at this place? Is it God honoring if go on and on and on and on? That's a very small thing to do. Now I want you to think in your lives. The times that you've asked yourself the question, is it okay if I do this? And I want you to think about the struggle internally in your mind and you say, well, what you wind up with is, well, it's not that bad. Well, it's, you know, it could be worse. But if we ask the question, is it God earned? There's a yes or no. There's not an internal struggle. There's nothing to fight about. There's nothing to weigh on. There's no decision to be... You, you, don't, have, you don't need a do's and don'ts. You don't, this can go from very small to very big. You understand what I'm saying? This is every single second of our lives. This is everything that we do down to the very little bitty thing, and it's everything that we do up to the huge, enormous, gigantic things. One question needs to be asked in every situation. Now, here's the thing. You might come to some spots that you say, is this God honoring? And you don't really know. 
because it's not really sin and it's not dishonoring to God, but it, but it could be honoring to God. Those are the things you need to pray about. Those are the things that you need to weigh out. Those are the things that we need clarif- clarification from God on. Okay? But we still ask the question. Because that's our motive. That's what we're doing is we're honoring God through our lives. And if we're honoring God through our lives, then that's the question we have to ask. Now, sometimes we'll need an answer. But 99% of the time, we don't even have to pray about it. We're praying about stuff we don't have to pray about. I had a discussion this week about praying about things and letting God answer things. See, we are a generation that will pray and that will pray and pray and pray and pray. I'm praying about it. I'm, I'm praying, praying for you, praying about it, praying about the decision I got to make. I'm praying about it. We pray, don't we pray? Do we pray? We pray. We get up. We pray. We're asking God about it. Let me ask you: How does God answer prayer? Somebody give that's somebody answer that for me. His word. Right here. This is how he answers prayer. This where's that? He reveals things to us in this book. And you know what? Sometimes he reveals things to us in this book that we've read it 50 million times, but we're not praying about that certain thing. And then we are praying about it and we read it again, and God goes, Here you go, here's your answer. And then you're like, Oh, wow. That was my answer for something else five years ago that had nothing to do with this. Might be. God uses his word for the exact moment that we need it. But we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray. But we don't read. We don't get the answers. We don't let God answer the prayers. We don't let him answer the questions that we ask him. Everything that's going on in our lives could be answered in this book. Our battle against purity is not about us. It's about God. And we have to make the decision that we're going to stop asking about me, 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 and me and ask, how does this do? How does this look? How is this? How, how does this fall in line with God? Because when I become His child, then I decide that my life is going to line up with His. And, and then, in turn, I decide that my marriage is going to line up with His. Him, and I decide that he is the centerpiece of my marriage, he's the head of my marriage, then everything has to answer the question, does this honor God or does it dishonor him? I have a lot of things, and you guys know this, there's hatred that I have for certain things, television, we went there last week, I hate that. We got rid of TV two and a half years ago, and it's great. It's an area, I don't, I try not to go to anything because I don't want it to sound like an agenda because it's not an agenda and it's not something that I want to tell you this is what you got to get rid of to make your life radically pure because it might not be in your life. I feel there are, there are certain things that, that, you know, it's just kind of common sense. But I want you to answer the question. I want you to ask the question first, and then I want you to answer the question. Does it honor God? I wished I would do this more in my life. I really do. It's something that I pray about a lot, and I seek his face on to show me the areas that I'm not asking, does it honor God? When I started preparing for this message, it hit me in the face. Because this is something that, 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 I, that I struggle with, that I fight with. And, and it's, a, it's a selfishness. It's what it is. Uh, that's the battle. I'm too selfish to ask if this honors God. Well, it's what I want. Does this honor God? And I, you know, that, I wished I could ask that more. That's my prayer. That's what I want to do. And that's what I want each and every single one of you to do this morning. Look over to Psalms 24.
Here's the reason that I think this is so important. I put myself several bookmarks in here today, so I wouldn't be flipping like crazy, and now I'm trying to remember where the bookmarks are. Which one's to which? Psalms 24, 1 through 6. This is why I think that it's so important that we understand purity in our lives and that we ask God to give us this and that we start asking the question, does this honor God? Here's the reason. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and, the, and, and they that dwell therein. For he, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall ascend in the hill of the Lord? Who's going to stand on this holy place? Who's going to be in here? Where, who's going to be on this, on this hill? Who's going to stand where God has created? And here's the answer. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, not, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. I want to receive the righteousness of the God of my salvation. I want to receive the blessings from God. Those blessings come from a pure heart and clean hands. Those blessings come from somebody that is, is giving their life over to God and that is following Him in the life of purity and following Him in the life of, of, of living a life that's clean and that's holy and that is the perfect and acceptable will of God. That's what I want. And that's what I want out of our marriages and that's what I want out of you individually. That you strive every day to live a life that's pure and that's holy and clean hands. And you can end the day and know that you gave everything to God today because you've lived a life that's pure. you lived a life that's holy. We talked, we, we know how much in our lives that, that, that we know how much in our marriages that, that sex and, and purity is, can destroy it or it can glorify it. We know this, right? We know this. We know that marriages end because of impurity. We know this. That's the reason I think we needed to take a week and just talk about it. Just talk about it because it's so individual as well as it is marital in that relationship. But either way, it's not about me and it's not about marriage. It's about God. It's an area in our lives where we have to give it over to Him. We have to understand that every, every decision that I make is about what it looks like for God and not me. I hope that you're getting this and I hope that you understand what I'm saying this morning. This takes some radical changes. You can't just walk out of here today and say, I'm going to live a pure life. You understand that? You can't make that decision today and then it's going to change. It's not something you can do. I mean, you might have an issue and you say, I'm going to quit. Let's just, all right. Anybody in here ever smoke? Uh, come on. All right, I smoked for years. I smoked cigarettes for a, a long time. What? We did too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. I mean, in the eye. And when I quit smoking, it's, I, I don't know why I'm using this as an example. I could use a lot of different things, but this is one thing I just, I don't know, thought people could relate. Uh, Obviously not. We grew up in the 90s, didn't we? Most of y'all. How old are y'all? I love it. Dude. I was born in the 90s. you gotta go there. I was born in the 90s. Uh, um, anyway, when I. thought this was a young adult class. Yeah. <laughs> When I decided, though, when, when I decided, when when Nikki decided I would quit smoking, I didn't just say, here's the point, this is what I'm trying to say. I didn't just say, all right, I quit. And then it was done. Right? No, that's not how it worked. You know, I wanted one like five minutes later. And... Today, I probably, I hadn't smoked I could smoke in. a pot. I could. Park, I, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's so 
something that is daily that you have to stop, that you have to quit. And see, here's the thing. It, it's so true because, and here's why, it completely changes our makeup of our body. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So when we're looking to change something... <laughs> yeah. uh, so when we're looking to make a change, a true change in our life, it's not just something we decide to do. It's not just something where we say, yeah, I'm going to change. No. Anytime we're making a change in our life, it's a daily deal. It's a minute deal. Okay? Because you can even decide, those ex-smokers, that today I'm not going to have a cigarette. But if you just do that once a day, then you're going to smoke. It's an every minute thing. Anytime we change our lives and we change the makeup of what's happening inside of us, it's an every minute thing. I'm going to choose to ask God what honors Him this second. And my next decision that I have to make, which will be maybe 15 seconds later, I'm going to ask him again. And again. And again. Whose responsibility is this? All right. Um... The life of purity and the life of living our lives in a way that honors God and that purifies God falls on somebody's shoulders. Let me just put it that way, okay? Flip with me to Joshua chapter 24. Very, very, very familiar passage. I want to talk to you just a little bit as we end today. Understand to me, understand what I'm telling you. We have to ask the question, does this honor God? Does what I'm wearing honor God? Does how I'm talking honor God? Does what I'm watching honor God? Does what I'm reading honor God? Does where I'm working honor God? Do the relationships that I have outside of my marriage honor God? Do you understand what I'm saying? We have to ask that. If we do not ask that question, we will not honor God through our decisions. If you never ask it, you will not honor God. It's not going to happen by accident. We live in a world that will not let that happen. You will not honor God by accident. This world, this culture, your friends, the people that you work with, the people that you're around, the people that your kids are going to school with are not going to let you accidentally honor God. It has to be intention. And it has to happen every minute of every day. Little stuff and big stuff. Whose responsibility is it? That's the last thing we're going to talk about. Husband, father, cheers. Talking on a family stage now. It's your responsibility for the purity of your family. It's your responsibility for the purity of your relationship with your wife. It's your responsibility. And I know as we live in a world today that it doesn't, doesn't look like it's your responsibility. But it is. And the reason that the world around us tries to take that away from you is because it's the way God intended it. Let's go back to James and just think about that verse in verse 4 when it says a friend of the world is an enemy of God. If the friend of, if a friend of the world is an enemy with God, then what is the world trying to do? The world's trying to take you away from what God wanted you to do. Everything that the world tells us that it is not your responsibility, husband, for your wife. It's not your responsibility for your kids. You know what? You need to let your kids grow up. You need to let your kids experience this. You need to let your kids do this when they're underneath you because you can tell, fix things and make things right. It's bogus. It's crap. A 
Okay? Many of us in here this morning have kids. And dads, I'm talking to you. It's your responsibility that when 20 years from now you're giving away your daughter, it's your responsibility that you're giving away a pure child. You understand? It's your responsibility. We look back and we can go back to the, to the old, old days back there in the very beginning of the book and we can see how things were set up back there, you know, in the Levitical law. And we can see that what the father did after the, the night that his daughter got married is he went in and he took the bed sheets. Why? To prove that he kept his daughter pure. That's the whole point of that. We can also look back in the Levitical law and we can see in those days that the age of accountability was 20. What does that mean? That means that you will be held accountable for what your kids do until they're 20 years old. You will be held accountable. You will be held accountable of who she goes out with. You will be held accountable of who she hangs around with. You will be held accountable for who he hangs out with and who he goes out with and the decisions that he makes. You will be held accountable. This is not something that's taught today in our churches. It's not something that's taught today in, in, in our culture. We say that the kids need to grow up. We give them their space. We give them their freedoms. It's not biblical. It's not biblical. I don't care if my kids like me. care if they look at me as their friend. Matter of fact, I do care, actually. I don't want them to look at me as their friend. When it tells me to raise my kids in the way that they should go and they'll not depart from it, it doesn't mean that I raise them until they're seven and they won't depart from it. It doesn't mean that when they're nine, I start letting them have their own decisions and they'll, they'll come back to it. It means that I raise them until the time that I release them. And I'm not releasing them. Nobody in here is saying that I'm releasing my kid at seven. But yeah, we do. Cell phones at nine and Facebook at eight. I said I wasn't going to get on specifics. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I do have an issue with those things. Because it goes against what God has showed us and that he's taught us. Joshua 24, chapter 15, or verse 15. Very common. We'll start in 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil to you, unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of which were your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land we dwell. But it's for me and my house. We'll serve the Lord. We use that passage a lot. We say it a lot. We hang it on the wall. But if I told you that if you're choosing to serve the Lord, then you're choosing a life of purity in your family. Would your answer still be, I choose to serve the Lord? If I told you, husband, that serving the Lord meant that you took the responsibility for your family and you took the responsibility for the well-being and the purity of your kids and your wife and even yourself... Would you still say, I choose to serve the Lord? If I told you that serving the Lord meant that you were going to have to make some major decisions in your life and that you might have to cut off things that you guys are used to, would you still say that I choose to serve the Lord? If I told you that tomorrow your whole life needed to change and be turned around and, and turned upside down, would you still say, I choose to serve the Lord. All those things I am telling you. 
I don't care what's acceptable to this world. I don't care what the world tells me that a movie is rated that my kids should be able to see this because that's what I don't care. I don't care the age limit that they put on joining this media site and this media site. I don't, I don't care. That doesn't mean anything to me. That's acceptable to the world. Do you know what? I don't, I don't want to be acceptable to the world. I don't give a crap if I'm acceptable to the world. I could care less if I'm acceptable. I could care less if I'm acceptable to my family outside of my marriage. You understand what I'm saying? I've got four brothers. There are three brothers. There's four of us. We've got a bunch of little girls. Uh, what's right for him and his family might not be right for me and mine. If that's acceptable for him, okay. That doesn't mean it's got to be acceptable for me. If it's acceptable for you, that doesn't mean anything for me. You know what I'm saying? We're in the same room. I love you. I love my brothers. I love the people around me. You don't set my standards. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. God sets my standards. God says what's acceptable. And He said it in His Word. Flip over there with you before we end. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the acceptable and perfect will of God? What is it? What is it? What is the acceptable will of God? Look at verse 1. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God. What's acceptable to God? Holiness. That's it. Covers a wide range. Covers a lot of topics. Covers purity. Holiness is acceptable to God. So therefore, if holiness is not what is acceptable to the people around me. I'm not basing that on them. I, I'm not basing my acceptability on them. When my girls go to somebody else's house, I, I better know what they're going into. I don't, I don't know everybody's kids' ages in here. My girls will be 10 or 11 this year. They're in that spot where they get a bunch of junk. You know what I hate? Other than TV. I hate it when I hear people say they're going to hear it anyway. because I don't think they're going to hear it anyway but because of what you're saying is it's acceptable to the world they're going to be exposed anyway not in my house I can't control the world but I can control my house God didn't tell me to control the world but he did tell me to control my house
There's a lot of underlying stuff in this. There's a lot of things you need to deal with. Things you need to deal with personally. Things you need to deal with in your marriage. Things you need to deal with in your house. Things you need to deal with with your job, with relationships outside of your marriage. Things that you feel are okay to watch or okay to read or okay to see. Music that you're okay with listening to. A lot of things need to change. But it's not changing because it's something that you want. It's changing because you're asking the question, does it glorify and honor God? I know how it is. I remember when I I used to play in a rock band. Somebody played in a rock band. I'll tell you some other thing. We'll go there. Anyway. I remember the day I quit listening. I remember the time. It wasn't that day. I remember the time that I quit listening to any kind of music that dishonored God. I, I, I'm a musical fanatic. I love music. Nikki and I had a 100 disc CD changer in our living room and we started going through it. We kept like one. Nikki started selling them on eBay. And you say, well, you selling them on eBay? She put tracks in the CDs when they went out. She had to quit because they were about to cancel her account because she kept getting notes back. I don't want your tracks. I just want your CD. But I remember how freeing that felt. Because it brought up so much junk. Being a musical guy like me, the things that you heard brought back memories. Brought back times. And it wasn't good. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Romans 12, 2 says, renew your mind. Renew your mind. How about the transforming through his word? To get rid of stuff that was in there. Couldn't watch the movies that we used to watch. I mean, yeah, the world said it was okay because I was 17. <laughs> Girl, whatever. But I remember the point, I remember that there were people around me that was like, they didn't, I wasn't, har I wasn't harassed for the gospel, I wasn't beaten. People were confused on why I couldn't listen to that. I didn't make a big deal about it, I just didn't listen to it. There are things that have to change. You need to do some inventory. Think about some things. What is it in your life that is not whole? Get rid of it. God's sitting here throwing things in my mind right now. Stuff that's in my life that's not holy. I pray He's doing the same for you. Because if I told you my vision, if God's going to do a revolution through this class, and I think that's the word I used when I told Eric, then we got to allow Him to purify our hearts, our minds, and our souls so that He can purify our marriages in a way that people around us look at them and say, that's what I need. That's what I want. That's what I desire.
obviously homework off of this. The homework is that you talk about some things. Don't make a list of do's and don'ts. Start asking, does this honor God? change this class and you set up the softball pitch, you know, purity. Start looking at music, videos, Facebook, whatever it is, we can all go down the list, right? But why? Why does everybody in this room, with our families, why do we look at that stuff? Why do we even take the time to think about throwing it out and not just go through society and look at other people and say, I'm doing better? For you personally, Seth, I told you one day we were going to have this conversation in this class when we talked outside. Why, for Seth, are you so passionate that marriages think about God-honoring system that we take out all the junk, that we filter it all out, and we protect ourselves? Why does Seth do it in his family? If you had to sum it up in five minutes. Psalms 24 that I just read sums it up. Sums it up. Because I want to have clean hands. And I want to have a pure heart. Because of what he's done for me. You know, that song, I can't remember if we talked about that day that you and I talked outside of class, but sometimes we sing that song, Give Us Clean Hands, Give Us a Pure Heart. It's one of my favorite songs. But it also sometimes disgusts me when I think about the culture and it coming out of people's mouths. Because the reality is, if that drives home for you what that biblical verse is saying, it's saying filter out all the junk. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to praise God and you really want to honor Him, and that's what's coming out of your soul, then you got to think about what He did for us on the cross. That's the only thing that will change us. Right. That's the only way we as individuals will really go forward and say, you know what, I'm going to get this junk out. Because it's a whole lot easier in this world to just say, you know, I'm doing good enough. Prepare yourself to your families, as you said, people around you, your closest friends, and say it's good enough. But if we, as this class, we're going to think about changing this church or changing this society, you really got to think about that song, that verse, and really think about it and drive that home for yourself, what that truly means to you and why we do it. It's because of what he did for us. He gave us life. Let's be honest about it. There could be lost people in this room right now. I'm confident there's lost people in this church. You say, why? Because it's a big church? No, because the Word of God says there's going to be tears intertwined in every church. That's what it is. We don't compare ourselves to everybody around us. We compare ourselves to Christ, what He did, and what His Word says. That's the one piece today that I didn't feel like was coming out of the why. Why we do this. Because you're passionate, and that's why I had to stop you. Everything you're saying, Seth, is on the mark. And then everybody come behind that and say why we do it. Walk out of this classroom, have conversations with your spouse of what it means to get real. That's the only way we change this society. That's the only way. Yeah. And you're right. It has to go back to, to why we're doing it, what, what it's for. And everything in our lives has to, has to do that. As a Christian, everything points back to the cross. Everything goes back to that. Everything goes back to what I came out of, what, what God brought me out of, what, what, brought, what God changed me with. Everything goes back to that. The, the whole reason that I'm passionate about marriage and I'm passionate about living the, a life of purity inside that marriage and being with my wife, what God has called me to be, the whole reason is because of, that I know that He showed me through His Word that the way that I honor Him is by that. Husband, the way you honor God is by loving your wife the way that Christ loved the church. It's the way you honor. It goes back to what we talked about last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was when we talked about the way, the submitting to your, submitting to your spouse on the wife's part and respecting him and loving your wife on the husband's part in whatever way necessary that meets her need for love. It's the way we honor God. I mean, think about that. Just, just 
Think about that just a second. God did something for us that we cannot repay. Absolutely cannot repay. But if you ask Him, as a husband, if you're standing here right now and you say, God, how can I repay you? Go to Ephesians 5. Read it. Read the whole chapter. The whole thing you can flip down through there. Ephesians 5, and it goes on into chapter 6, and it says, this is how you repay me. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit to your husbands. Uh, Children, obey your parents. Slaves, follow your owners and do as they say. Masters, I don't remember how it says it exactly, but masters, treat everybody the same. All of your servants the same. All of your employees the same. These are the things that it says for us to do. That's how we repay Him. That's the question that it's answering. And that's why I'm passionate about it. It's because it's the place that I've found where God says, this is how you repay me for what I did for you. Anybody else got anything? It's good, man. If you guys have prayer, immediate prayer needs that you need to share, share them with each other. Let's get up to service. Dear Lord God, we just ask you to to show us right now what we need to clean up in our lives, what we need to allow you to clean in our lives, what we need to allow you to purify in our lives. God, I know every single one of us have things that, that are just... Ah, that are just taken away from your glory and taken away from your honor that could be in our lives. And I just ask you right now, God, to show each and every one of us what it is. We just thank you for your word. Thank you for your challenge. I thank you for your, for your followers, God, that are willing to stand up and to be uh, outspoken for you and to follow you and to do what you want us to do. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.